I'm anthropologist Mariano Hotter. And feral child cases have always fascinated me. I want to investigate one of the most incredible stories I've ever heard. My mission? To separate fact from fiction. And to find this child raised wild. This is a site of world importance. That's right. We're not just telling the story of one copper manufactory in a small bit of South Wales. This is a story with global importance. Witnesses saw the four knights chase Beckett into this corner of the cathedral. One of them drew his sword and sliced at Beckett, cutting off the top of his skull. The others laid in, and Beckett fell, his brains and his blood staining the cathedral floor. So now we've gutted and skinned it, what do we do next? Various cuts would go to various people. The haunches, these are the prized possessions. This is what ends up on this, the nobles' table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Let's get it on the barbie. He couldn't cope with the people, he couldn't cope with the attention, he couldn't cope with people touching him, and they couldn't cope with him. How many of you in the house? Oh, is that the family? Yeah. Oh, look at that. May I get it down? Yeah, you can take it down, have yes. Oh, look at that. And you all grew up in Havard? Yeah, all and in the one house. And did you work? Donor works, donor works, donor works, donor works, donor works, donor works, donor works. That's a family connection. Yeah. Trauma can stop someone from speaking, even if they are physically able, and all the neurological connections are in place. I think it took years for him to start to trust humans, and it was only then that he started to speak again. This ancient token shows a slightly unusual Roman numeral for 14, and on the other side, there's a rather erotic image. So tell us about this token that you found. I thought, first of all, it was a Roman coin, you know? I saw a couple who seems to have um, a little bit of fun there. <laughs> and uh, start to do some research on the internet. What did you search for on the internet? Well, I think, Roman if coin I remember well, I think I put... having fun. No, 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 <laughs> I didn't put uh, Roman couple having fun. I just put, uh, I think, uh, Roman coin and sex. Well and some stuff started to come out, and I said, well, I that's it. it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's him. This was Fiji Sunny. Yeah. Yeah, that's him. It was in this spot, here. So this is here? I'm instantly drawn to this beautiful head. It's Tell me about it. It's fabulous, isn't it? Well, stone's not really my thing, but, I mean, that's very obviously a very posh bit of medieval carved stone. Is it a dog? Dog, dragon, wolf, I don't know. It's one of the big pointy teeth, whatever it is. <laughs> Delighted to say that what I feared I might find isn't the case. It's good here, right? Yeah, Baraboy is good. It's been an amazing journey, and I have finally met the person known as the Dog Girl of Ukraine. But for me, that nickname no longer feels right. If we look at Neolithic monuments from about 3,500 BC, West Kennet Longbarrow, for example, we can see that they're monuments on a much smaller scale. Shoot forwards a thousand years, and suddenly the undertakings are huge. Avebury Stone Circle, the megaliths at Stonehenge, and, of course, Silbury Hill. These are monuments on steroids. Which brings us neatly, Alex, to your love of experimental archaeology. Yes and how there might be no better way of understanding life as a Roman legionary than to live it for 24 hours. Right, OK, this is sandals and skirts time, I guess. All the way. <laughs> Are you up for it? Well, I don't think I've got any choice about this, have I? Nope. No, no. <laughs> We've got a lovely, delicious, horrible little man centurion waiting for you over there. Even now, when you're throwing a penny into a wishing well, you're engaging in what is a very, very ancient not fully understood tradition of making an offering to something where water and life come together. And I think when you're talking about Arthur's dying wish be that Excalibur be thrown back into the water from where it came, on an instinctual level, we all understand the power of that act. <laughs> 